Hi everyone, I'm Pat Awesome with Partnership to End Addiction, and I've teamed up with the National Family Support Technical Assistance Center under the National Federation of Families to talk to you today about what to do if a loved one who has a mental health problem or a disorder is self-medicating. What if I told you I had something magical that could make you feel really confident in social settings instead of anxious? Perhaps maybe feeling more hopeful instead of depressed or able to sleep at night instead of counting sheep, or maybe a way to deal with boredom and isolation or to escape your problems, even if it was for just a short period of time. That's often what people are doing who are using alcohol and other drugs to alleviate symptoms they might be feeling with their mental health disorder. So while it may help in the short term, over the long term, typically mental health symptoms worsen. So when substance use and mental health go hand in hand, it's described as a co-occurring disorder. Sometimes people call it dual diagnosis, so you may have heard that term as well. Many years ago when I was working in a psychiatric hospital, we had a young woman come in who had been drinking the night before. She was a personal trainer, by the way. She'd been drinking the night before and had slit her throat from ear to ear. And she was horrified. She had done it in the middle of a blackout and was extremely depressed. And now she's wondering how is she gonna work with her clients because she, she needed plastic surgery to fix the injury that she had caused. So she was then diagnosed with a major depressive disorder, major depressive episode, as well as an alcohol use disorder. And by the way, when I say alcohol use disorder, it's just a clinical term referring to addiction. On the other hand, we had a young man come in who was wearing red sneakers. I always remember his red sneakers. He was hallucinating and seeing things that weren't there, hearing things that weren't there, very paranoid. And he had been using K2, which is a synthetic form of marijuana. So as soon as he stopped using the K2, his symptoms went away. So he wasn't diagnosed with a co-occurring disorder, even though his symptoms looked like they might have mimicked uh, a psychotic disorder of some kind. So each disorder has to be identified and diagnosed on its own. So what mental health disorders are most likely to co-occur with substance use? You can see them on this slide. I'm not gonna go through the entire list, but there are two important points I wanna make. The first is that people may misuse their prescription and over-the-counter medications in addition to or instead of alcohol and other drugs. For example, a person taking benzodiazepines, including Xanax, Ativan, and Clonopin, may take more than what was prescribed. A person with ADHD may misuse their Ritalin or Adderall, and a person with an eating disorder might misuse laxatives. The second point is that our country is being flooded with counterfeit or fake pills, pills that look like Xanax, Adderall, or pain medications, including Percocet and Vicodin. Many of them contain fentanyl, a powerful opioid that can result in overdose or death. It's really important to make sure your loved one is getting medications from a legitimate pharmacy and not off the street or on the web. Imagine going to the doctor with a really bad sore throat and back pain. And you get to the doctor and they say, well, you know, it's interesting that you have both these problems, but I'm only going to treat you for your sore throat you'd probably be really unhappy with your doctor and really disappointed in the care you were provided. The same thing is true of integrated treatment. We can't treat half the person, meaning we can't treat just their alcohol use disorder or just their mental health disorder. We need a program that provides treatment for both and preferably treated by the same clinicians who are well-versed and trained in both. I can remember several years ago when I was not in this field and I didn't know much about this topic, I was looking for someone to help one of my loved ones who had a co-occurring disorder and we were recommended to a counselor who I thought was trained in both and only later learned that he had no clue about addiction. I've seen programs where they will hand out pills that you've brought to the treatment program but they don't have someone on staff who is actually overseeing your, your care and treatment and really evaluating your loved one's needs and the medications that might be helpful. So they'll advertise that they treat co-occurring disorders, but they really don't, they're just handing out pills. And then in some cases, 
there are physicians and other mental health care providers who will not treat someone who is using substances actively. We have an addiction psychiatrist in our community who will only treat someone with a co-occurring disorder if they're totally abstinent from any substances. So it's really important to find a program that will be a good fit for your loved one and provide treatment for both disorders at the same time. So what resources can help families, especially if you're looking for help for a loved one? So I've identified three that I think will be most useful for you, and you can find them at drugfree.org, which is the partnerships website. The first one is a guide that was developed, it's on the left, called Substance Use and Mental Health in Teens and Young Adults. This was a collaboration that we did with Child Mind Institute, and it offers a lot of information about different disorders like bipolar disorder, ADHD, anxiety, and depression, and so forth, as well as how substance use might show up. It also talks about the different kinds of treatment options that are available and how to go about finding quality treatment for a loved one, ways you can support your loved one, and perhaps more importantly, how do you motivate them to get treatment. We also offer a bilingual English-Spanish helpline. The specialist will listen to your concerns and help you develop a, an action plan and point you to other resources that may be helpful. And lastly, we have a treatment locator. So you answer a basic series of questions about your loved one's needs, and it will give you a list of places that you can contact to find out which one will be the best fit for your loved one. All of the services are free, by the way, and again, located at drugfree.org. Thank you for joining me today. And again, please reach out to us at drugfree.org if you need help. We know how challenging it can be to support a loved one who has a co-occurring disorder. So please reach out, let us help you. Let us make this journey easier. Thank you.